Hey guys, this is Eric Weinrunner with Weinrunner Racing. Doing another cylinder head review video. This one's actually over the Trick Flow small block Ford. You guys finally came up. Uh, 240 CNC head. Um, the customer ordered them bare, and I'm going to get to port them, so I'm going to get to show you some of the stuff. But I thought I'd go over it. But before I do, I want to talk about a few things. Um, I often get asked, how come you don't do more Ford videos? Well, it's because of what comes in. It's not that I've got one family I prefer over the another. Um, it's, I know it looks like I do a lot of small block Chevys because really that's the most of the amount of customer stuff that comes in. So it's by far the most. You would think it'd be LS's, but really, like I say, LS guys, they, for whatever reason, they just don't spend as much money on heads as um, small block Chevy or even big block Chevy guys do. But if you ask me which family do you like, I really don't care what family. Um, I just care that it makes power. But if I had my real choice and I could put any small block in anything, I would run a small block Ford. As a matter of fact, my GMC Sonoma that has a Chevy in it now, if I could get um, someone to do a Ford for that and do a 351 Cleaver, that'd be the cat's meow to me. I would love to have it in there. Of course, people think that is sacrilege. Uh, but I, I love the small block Ford platform. There's They have so many good heads from their Cleveland heads to even their wedge heads like this that are just great. And not that Chevys and LSs don't, but I mean, I really do think these are pretty good. They've got a lot of good things about them. But anyway, let's go ahead and go over this head and we'll talk about some of it. First thing I wanna talk about um, is this. So this is the rocker bar where the stand would go if you ran shaft rockers. It's a one piece, great thing here. But what I really like about Ford heads, and Chevys don't do this or not as much, is you could tell how many threads are engaged here for where your rocker studs go. If this was a small block Chevy, you'd have about half before it breaks through the port. So it makes the port so much stronger. That's actually this one, sorry. It makes the head so much stronger, the rocker bust so much stronger because you've got more thread engagement. Chevys are notorious for trying to pull out the studs. Uh, not notorious, but that you're more likely to do it than you would be on a Ford because there's just more material. Love it. Now, Trick Flow makes this head. It's American casting and it's quality. You got good guides for sure and um, nice aluminum and this is a really good head. Now, let's talk about a few things, get to the meat and potatoes here. The thing I really like most, so I'm just giving you a broad overview here. I'm gonna try to zoom in. Now remember, I'm not the best with camera work, so please forgive me. The thing I like, and I've got my pointer here, is usually when CNC heads cut, they're not all equal. Some are way better than others. Trip Flow does a really good job. This right here is the top cut. It's the top angle of your valve job. What you wanna see is it sweep into the chamber. This does perfectly. What you don't wanna see is these little ridges like this. Let me show you better over here. Uh, maybe right there. That's small, that's insignificant, but I have seen right here on several CNC heads where it's got a good notch. Not That hurts flow, because the air is coming off, hitting that hurts it, especially on this backside here. Trick flow, great job, great job. If you also wanna tell how good a CNC head is, the next thing you look at is the step over. And I'll explain that. I'm gonna turn on my flashlight here and aim it in the port so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, you see this line here? This line will go all the way around to the other side. Every CNC head has it. Uh, the, how big this line is or how the step is really depends on how good the guy is that's programming it and the machine running on it. Here, let me explain why. The way the machine works, the CNC head porting machine, there's like a, it's called a lollipop, but it's got a burr on here and it spins this way. It's in this exact direction that it cuts first. And it cuts in circles till about here. Then what happens is the machine will flip the head over this direction and start cutting from here. Okay? Move my flashlight back, I'm sorry. So what happens is the two tooling paths will meet up at that line. If you've got a really good programmer, that line, that ridge there will be pretty small. And this one is. It looks worse than it is, but I'm telling you, I'm running my thing across it. Hardly noticeable. So good job, more obvious than others. Really good companies will have it where you can't even see that line. But it's harder to do than you think. You just don't tell the computer to do it. It takes a little bit of thought and some work into it. So good job on trip flow's part. Now let's talk about some of the measurements. Besides this, I do like the chamber design. Great job, guys. That's a good, I solid. The only thing that worry about worries them about some of the Fords is, in a way, I wish they'd move this spark plug just a little bit this way. And I don't know if it hurts fuel flow to do that, but the biggest thing about trip flow heads and other Ford heads and even LS heads in general, they'll crack from here to here. 
right across. The reason why it's because it's so close to the seat area and that's got a press so it's pushing in on the seat and there's stress right there and then you have heat and stuff and they crack. So if you bring it out a little bit or at least this way it's not as bad. So but I don't know I have never seen a wet flow picture of this and I haven't done yet on this to see what it makes a difference but just something to think about. However uh, let's look at our measurements. So when I'm looking at a head because I look at it from a head porter side I take these measurements. So these are the best ones. Throat, bowl, short side area, push rod. The throat is from here, the bottom of your valve job, across. I measure 1.894, which is 90.1% of the valve diameter because it's a 210 valve. 90% is pretty safe. You can go up to, usually if the throat's bigger, it'll flow more, but it doesn't necessarily mean it makes more power because you can go too big on the throat too. I've seen them, the most I think I've ever gone is a 92.2. That was a really high end head, so it was able to make it happen. If you just tried that with this, you would kill it. But anyway, the bowl area, or bowl is percentages from, this is the valve guide. If I go across this way and across this way, it measured 2.02, which is 96.1% of the valve. Um, you could go bigger, and that's probably what I'll do, because I'm actually gonna get to port these heads and see if I can improve them. And there is some areas that can be improved on. The two other ones are short side area, and I'm gonna flip the head over to show you that, and the push rod area. This is a standout from a small block Chevy side compared to a Ford. This area is at the push rod pinch, does not require shaft rockers, and it measures 2.84. That's big. For a small block Chevy, you won't get that unless without shaft rockers. You need shaft rockers to make that happen. So advantage definitely for the Ford. Now in case you're wondering, what's the difference between like a Ford and a Chevy, and like say your LS? The biggest thing is, because if, if I took this head, I just took a picture, some people wouldn't even recognize that this is a Ford versus a LS. Because if you look at it, you got four bolts, just like the LS does. The port's in the same spot for the most part. The water ports would give it away, but the same with the push rods and tubes. But here's the difference. And there's some guy on, on YouTube right now that's trying to put an LS head on a Ford. Ford already has great heads, you don't have to put an LS head on it, but whatever. The biggest difference is on the Ford versus the LS, is a Ford is a 3.94 bore center and a Chevy's a 4.4. I might be wrong on that, but the bore centers are definitely different. And what I mean by that is um, from here, the center line of the bore to the center line of the bore, and my numbers on the last part, what I said 3.9 and 4.4 might be wrong. I'm just doing it off the top of my head real quick. But I do know that the Ford valve center line is closer together than the LS. So the LS actually spreads them apart a little bit and not by much. And the Ford's much closer together. So because of that, um, there's, it, there's some catches. So it makes less material between here as opposed to the LS because the LS can spread the chambers out because there's more room between the bores. But just something to think about. Other than that, the heads are really are similar. So some of the Ford guys, when they argue with the LS guys, you have a Ford head on there and you're not that far. Matter of fact, you can actually, on my flow bench, I've got a flow plate and I could flow an LS head and a small block Ford on the same flow plate because it's only using quarter inch bolt holes. So they're really close. The dowels are the same and everything. It's kind of weird. However, I did flow this on a Ford plate. Okay, this is the next thing I was gonna talk about. See how nice that is now? Let me get my flashlight, sorry. Uh, wrong hole, there we go. There's what you look like on the inside. Sorry for the crappy views. There you go. The short side area, by the way, would be at the apex, which is right here and up, and then across there. The push rod one, which I know it's hard for me. I need someone to film. It's from pretty much here across, and then the height, and that's your push rod area, just in case you're wondering. Okay, so what did it flow? That's your flow numbers. Now this is a full 155 bore and I used the Sanyo's bench. I didn't use Superflow. Um, I just thought I'd show you this. It's out of the box. And I actually used the Brodix valve. And you might be like, why did you use the Brodix valve instead of the valves that come in these are Ferreas? Because the customer sent me this Ferrea valve. Okay, and I, th this is a great valve and it's gonna be used in it. And it's actually gonna outflow the, the Brodix. And I'll explain this more in a second. You see the valve does not have a back cut. The Brodex one is the one I just happen to have handy. It does have a back cut. This Brodex valve will flow more than this one without it being cut. 
I will eventually put a back cut on this valve before I'm done with the pore work and stuff. And you're like, why didn't you do it and flow it that way? Because it's gonna mess up the valve because I need to put my own angle on first, then the back cut. If I just put the back cut first, it almost ruins the valve because it's hard to do my next step. However, it will on the vinyl. And just for the record, I have flowed this with the valves from, that directly came out of it. So someone sent me a similar one. They are three CFM better. So if you get your Ferreira valve that come with this head, they're three CFM better than these numbers. Um, but regardless, still good numbers. Just thought I'd say that first off. Now on the exhaust, I used the Tulip one because there's no back cuts on the exhaust, so it's the exact same one you would have in your trick flow head. Okay, just the only thing that would be different would be the intake. All right, let's talk about these flow numbers real quick. I look at, by the way, I couldn't go to one inch valve lift because as you could tell, that valve is shorter than that. It actually hit the retainer, it couldn't go any further, but it's fine. The numbers I care most about are the 400, 600, and peak. So if you look at the 400 number, that's 268. That's a really, really good number. Really good number. The one that had the Freya valves, just in case you're wondering, I had that, it flowed 269. So when I see what I mean, not that much of a difference. The 600 number was at 315, great number. The width of Freya valve was 318. And the peak number was 325, or 327 with the Freya valve. The exhausts were identical. Um, so that's the exhaust flow. Fords usually suck on the exhaust side, and I'll show you in just a minute why. It has to do with their exhaust location, but this one is pretty good. And the reason why is because this trick flow head, and they're not, by the way, you can tell it's not twisted. They have a twisted one. It's not, it's in line. So it's great for most pistons. The thing is this one has an raised up exhaust port. And the reason why is because, and bear with me as I flip the head over, I'm sorry. Sorry for that try to go fast the stock exhaust has the port like way down here Ford's one mistake that Ford's made when they had their heads is they put the exhaust port location so far down and probably because the Ford's if you notice they have a taller deck height they're at 9.5 which means the exhaust ports are already up higher and I think they were worrying about exhaust clearance and stuff when they designed the vehicle so they left the exhaust port as low as they could well it hurts exhaust flow dramatically the aftermarket trick flow in Pacific has addressed this issue by raising the exhaust port so these are the reason why they're called high port. They didn't raise the intake, they raised the exhaust. Um, there's a disadvantage of that is headers will be have a hard time fitting because you raise it up. Sometimes they'll clear your chassis, sometimes they won't. That's one disadvantage, but the exhaust flow definitely makes more power. The other thing I like about trick flow heads, is you see these? This is water coolant passages that go around the spark plug in the chamber area to keep it cooler. Really nice, especially for power adder deals. Anyway, I hope that kind of explains it. Now, if you look back at the exhaust numbers, I want to tell you also, this is without an exhaust pipe. I didn't flow them with the exhaust pipe, some do, I don't. Okay, I hope I've given you a fairly decent overview of this head. I will get a chance to port this, but it'll be different. So we'll see what happens from there. But if you're looking for a head and you're like, can you just tell me what would be a good out of the box head CNC ported for a small block four, nothing too crazy, it's this one. I really like this head. I think it's better than the AFR. Um, it's, it's a nice head and quality wise, top notch. All right, you guys take care. Thanks for watching the long video. Sorry about that. Bye.